I'll start with Debbie Tonga. Carlos Zano, what sort of impressed you about your game and what stage of this sort of super season did he emerge in your radar? Um, I probably chatted to Carlo halfway through the season um, and stayed in touch after that. Uh, he, he was in the hub training with the, with the Waratahs boys once they were out of the Super Rugby. So, um, you know, we, we had a bit of a, um, a work in progress, I over Carlo, and, um, you know, it, it's a fantastic opportunity for him. Just in terms of Carlo, is that the sort of, is it fair to say he's almost the best life like replacement for Fraser? I'm trying to replicate what he does over breakdown. Um, I'm not sure that you can ever get like for like, um, we, we just felt that Carlo would um, suit the, the combination that we picked in the, in the back row and, and in the second row and, and so best compliment that really and um, he's such a good young man uh, and um, you know, we're really uh, excited about watching him get underway in 48 hours time. No, I, you know, I, I think he's, uh, his energy is, is relatively positive, uh, more, than a, more than abrasive, but, but he fights for everything, Carlo, and, and that's what first caught our eye. Um, he's quite a dynamic um, competitor around the breakdown, and, um, and you know, I, I think in the context of losing Fraser, we, we needed someone who could bring elements of Fraser's game, but but probably not all of them. That's why we were picking Fraser before, but it's a great opportunity for Carlo. Just on Tanyala, um, family kind of reason, firstly, but secondly, how big a blow is that to lose such a giant forward back to all? Yeah, Tanyala is, is Tanyala, you know, he's, he's, he's massively powerful. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, at the same time, we, we've we've got to we've got to be able to build depth. And one of the things that we tried to do through July, um, even at the risk of making ten changes before Georgia and five changes between the Welsh tests, is to try to grow that base. And so, you know, we're in a very different stage of our development as compared to the the Springbok, and that that's always a risk. We've got about half as many caps, and a quarter of those belong to James Slipper. Um, so. You know, from that perspective, we are still going to keep trying to build. And uh, if if we do lose someone, we, we've got to be able to to best um, operate as a, as a Wallaby squad and, and not be overly reliant on individual players. Speaking of depth, you've also handed a potential cap to Luke Reimer off the bench as well, which is exciting for him. Uh, what made uh, him catch your eye after bringing him into camp? Um, we brought him into camp uh, during the Georgia week. Uh, that we, we had a few uh, injury concerns at that stage, and so yeah, you know, he trained really well, and that allowed it, allowed him to be the the springboard into uh, continuing with the squad again this week. He's he's trained well. He, he's he's such a good competitor over the ball. Um, he, he's got a good low tackle, and um, you know again. Uh, he doesn't give up the fight easily, Luke. Um, so, so again, we're hopeful that he'll bring really, really good abrasive energy off off the off the bench. Does it almost work as a one-two punch to cover Fraser? Who is a big loss, but having two very attacking mindset open sides to come on in Carl and Luke it surely helps to cover that loss for Fraser. Yeah, to a degree. Um, you know, there was always the debate around. Do, do we even go with a 6-2 split because two, having two specialised sevens is an unusual situation for us. Um, but um, we, we feel that uh, Jeremy Williams has done a really good job for us, covers back row and, and second row. So um, we just felt it was, it was worthwhile um, having both those guys. Uh, and, and there was also a temptation of maybe using someone who, who was multi-purpose, you know, like a Tom Hooper or a Siru Uru to give us a bit broader coverage, but maybe not the same. You know, if we lost Carlo early, it would be it'd be a long time in the seven jersey, which is not overly familiar to either of those two. So it was, it was just trying to balance all those elements up, really. Was the decision to uh, select Nalo a simple 
number one, and secondly, another specialist ten on the, on the bench. Uh, it's unusual as well. What does he provide? Yeah, it's. <laughs> I think most teams have a ten on the bench. Maybe not a specialist uh, per se, but um, Noah's. Noah's had the most time in the saddle, really, for us um, through training and through those first two Welsh tests. So uh, he, he's got that opportunity. Um, we lost Tom for maybe a week and a half with a with a hamstring niggle. He's back to 100%, but he had to get through this week's training. So there was a little bit of uncertainty there. And um, and Ben Donaldson, he's he's working really hard on his game, and we're trying to. We're trying to help him um, make sure that some of the things he, he's actually really good at uh, get delivered consistently. He just he didn't get a good start to the Georgia game and, and then things didn't flow for him. So we just want to make sure that next time he goes in, he's, he's right up to speed and, and confident um, because he, he, he's got a really good skill set. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that gives us confidence is is that um, you know in, it's, we're not guided by the belief that it's external, but but it's fantastic to have the support around even around the city. Um, walking back from a from a uh, a function yesterday, people in the street sort of saying, "Oh, good luck, good luck on Saturday." And you know, I, I haven't spent a huge amount of time um, in in the rugby community here, but. But there seems to be a, a, a real support going into the weekend, which is, you know, it, 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 it sort of swings both ways for us. There's an expectation that we have to try to live up to, but there's a support that, that, uh, that we want to keep earning. So I, I've, with regard to that, I think we've got to make sure that we, that we match up um, at set piece, because whatever you do against South Africa, You've got to be able to match up at set piece because that's where the whole thing starts, and from there, um, you know they they really stressed uh, Ireland going side to side. You know the the width of their attack, um, and I think with Sacha being preferred over Andre, um, you know he, he, he's going to bring some tempo, and and um, you know whether whether it's Cobus or, or Grant Williams, they've got incredibly quick nines. So even around those fringes and then the edges, a lot of what they bring, we're going to have to be ready to match up for. Then on our side, I, I think we're going to just have to make sure that we're really accurate. Uh, a quarter of the tries they've scored over the last year have been from turnover. And, and if, you, if you give them that oxygen uh, and allow them to breathe on the, on the edges or through and behind you, because they can turn the game around so quickly with the likes of Cheslin and, and uh, Kurt Learonce and, and, and Willie LaRue with his experience in passing game. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it is quite intimidating if you, if you consider their personnel, but at the same time, um, it's, it's never just individuals that can win you a game. And, and we've got to collectively build a, a Wallabies um, team, squad and belief. And, and Hopefully, there can be a little bit of a, a look at that on Saturday. Joe, can you just run us through your thought process of no Marika Cosby in his 23? Yeah, Marika um, wasn't quite ready. And uh, this week was about orientating him and getting him back up to speed. And, uh, you know, I think Marika will be available um, beyond this week. But this week was a little bit too soon. And Marika and I had a chat at the start of the week. It's a little bit the same with Corey Tall, Max Jorgensen, those guys who were fresh in this week. You know, it's a whole new language to learn. Uh, uh, just just to get comfortable in the systems, uh, it's just to give him enough time, really. He, he's, he's fit in really well. He's, he's, he's a character, Marika, around about the place uh, in a really positive sense. Um, and he, and he has a, a, a real um, kind of sense of 
the game that allows him to get involved at the right moments. He works hard across the field, and I've always thought coaching against him that he's an absolute handful. So, you know, he, he's a guy that we've got a lot of respect for. You looked at Springbok's say layout. Yeah, it, I think one of the things that you, you've got to have conviction in what you're doing and, and you've got to consider where you're trying to take the team first. If you can, I think you're always conscious of what they're going to bring and you know what it is and, it, and, it's, and it's very confrontational and, and hard to shut down. We, we know that's coming, but by, by being overly... Um, focus on them. We can start to use, lose a bit of our own identity and 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 how these players we've got want to play. So it, it, it was it was a balance. And I, I'm not saying I, I've made enough mistakes and in, in so many years I've been involved with with coaching that we haven't necessarily got it right. But we're still finding out who we are, let alone um, trying to cater for for what the opposition bring. Do you do you consider Angus Bell in a similar category as Corey's and Marika's just in there, so a bit more time on the train Yeah, and Angus felt that as well. So he, he's another guy who, who's in a really good position to um, offer more. I had a chat to, to Angus just after training today. Uh, I thought he trained really well. And his confidence in uh, his fitness and his readiness is, is increasing. So, yeah, it'd be great. it'd be great to to be able to get him back into the picture as well. But one of the, one of the dangers is, uh, I, I think, being so anxious to get someone back involved, you put them in when they're not quite ready and, and no one really wins on the back of that. The guy who's had the position so far and is working hard, um, you know, he, he's still trying to earn his place. And then the guy who's coming in, um, if he's not quite ready and not quite at the peak of his confidence, then, um, you know, you, you probably lose out either way. The last couple of things, guys, but you, the sort of you want to come back over to this other room after as well, if they want to, did you have something? No, no, no. Are you the sort of coach that um, embraces an underdog tag or because of your pragmatic nature, it's, it doesn't really factor in? Yeah, I'd, I would be a fairly pragmatic. Um, you know, when I started with Ireland, it was really easy to be underdog, but but it wasn't necessarily relevant to the way we performed. We just wanted to get our process right and and remain really process driven. Um, coaching with the All Blacks, there's there's always a massive expectation with the All Blacks, and so um, a, again, that that can weigh heavily. But I, I think they they live with it all the time, just like the Springbok live with it all the time. There's there's a real expectation when the Springbok go out that they they're going to be incredibly hard to beat. So um, for us, we haven't really talked about it, to be fair. We've just talked about getting this right and that right and trying to put enough things together that are, that are accurate um, so that we, um, we can get the process right rather than the, the perception, be affected by the perception, if you know what I mean. Joe, can I circle back to that external force you were talking about? This city, this place, this community, that ground is so hard to win at visiting teams. And you would have experienced that. What is it about Suncorp Stadium that the Wallabies uh, make so hard to, to beat there? Yeah, I would toured here coaching Ireland 2018 and we, uh, we won two out of three. But the one out of three that we didn't was, was here in Suncorp. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure whether it's there's any mystique in the ground. And again, being a bit of a pragmatist, um, I, I think when the whistle goes, uh, I don't think we'll be asking Kobus Ronick if he's interested in any history. <laughs> um, he, he, they're all about creating their future. And, and every time a player goes out, they're trying to create um, the, the immediate future. They, they, they're not worried about what happens in the second half. They have, they have to get what's right right in front of them. So uh, I'm not sure that it will affect the, the players, but it's a nice it's a nice bit of history to have on your side. And and the nicest thing about it is the support. Um, and I'd love to see you know a lot of that support and gold um, 
really pretty uh, vocal in, in getting behind the, the team because w while while it might not change the bounce of a ball, it, it, it can affect the strength of belief and the, and the motivation and, and uh, the willingness to fight for the inches that matter. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it.